Peter chapter 4 verse 17. First Peter chapter 4 verse 17. For the, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. Uh, the judgment will come, the examination will come, and the investigation will come, and the Lord will look at every life. What did you do with all the studies you learned? What did you do with all the verses you read? What did you do with all the messages you heard? What did you do with that challenge of evangelism the Lord has given to everyone? What did you do when the opportunity came for you to be a Christian worker, a soul winner, and when the opportunity came for you to open your mouth and tell other people, it says for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God and if it first begin at us what shall the end of them be that obey not what shall the end of them be that obey not what shall the end be for them that obey not the gospel of God I pray will be obedient in Jesus name the church had remained in Jerusalem for a long time and through this persecution gospel preaching extended to Judea and Samaria following the pattern of expansion previously outlined by the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the head of the church. He had told them both in Jerusalem and then Judea, then Samaria, then to the utmost part of the earth. The persecution made them to now go in the direction they ought to go. Though many Christians were scattered, they became preachers, witnesses, and soul winners for Christ everywhere they went. And many people repented of their sins and they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and he turned wholeheartedly unto the Lord. Let's uh, come back to Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 and look at three, um, three parts as we study today. Number one, great progress despite great persecution. Great progress despite great persecution. Come back to Acts chapter 8 reading from verse 1 again. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. There was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And it says, and they were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. I want you to picture in your mind. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, we're told that 3,000 came to know the Lord and came to the Lord and were uh, continuing in fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. In Acts of the Apostles chapter 4 verse 4, we're told that 5,000 came to know the Lord. Other people say that's the aggregate, that's the total. Well, even if that's the total, 5,000, that's a large number. And then as you come to Acts chapter 5, and you're reading from around verse 12 to verse 6, it says, multitudes, multitudes came to know the Lord. You come to Acts chapter 6 and verse 7, and it says a great number uh, believed on the Lord and the, the church multiplied greatly. Now you are counting thousands and thousands of people. But now it says the world scattered. Large church. A big church. We call it a mega church of thousands and thousands of people. And it only remains 12 apostles in Jerusalem. What then happened to the church in Jerusalem? There are some people that will think then it means that the church in Jerusalem now is gone. It's gone. Because there's no church anymore there. But don't you understand? One Philip went to Samaria and many people came to know the Lord and 12 apostles still remained in Jerusalem. They started the work all over again. When the, when the church was scattered, all the members were doing great things in all the places they were scattered to. But those apostles remaining in uh, Jerusalem, they started the work all over again and there was great, great progress. Just like uh, by the grace of God, in your own church location, there's going to be great progress. In your group, there's going to be great progress. In every local government, every province and every every region and state and nation in this, in this land, in this country and beyond, there's going to be great progress in Jesus' name. I just want to show you now what happened to the Jerusalem church? We're looking at chapter 9 and verse 26. Chapter 9, verse 26. Remember, all the believers, thousands of them were scattered and um, the apostles remained only in um, Jerusalem. But let's see how the church now began all over again in Jerusalem. Verse 26 of chapter 9. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he had said to join himself, 
to the disciples, not only apostles, to the disciples. All the people have been won to the Lord. Converts came to know the Lord. Don't you remember that Peter, John, James, Matthew, all those apostles, they had the power of the Holy Ghost. And they had the power to heal. And the power to cast out devils. And they had the gift of faith. And the gift of walking miracles. And because the gift of a man will always bring him out. And even though all the other disciples have been scattered, they started evangelizing again with power gifts, with the power evangelism. And many people see came to know the Lord. And as you come to the, fourth, the next chapter, in chapter 9, verse 26, it says, When Saul was come to Jerusalem, he has said he tried to join himself to the disciples. And then he says, And they were all afraid, all afraid of him, and believed not that he was a disciple. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way. And then it says and that, uh, and, and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And he was with them coming in and going out at Jerusalem. So the church started to grow again. Your church will grow. As we all get involved, this is what the Lord does. And you see the scattering of the disciples. It didn't stop the church. It didn't kill the church. It didn't destroy the church. They walk in Joseph, started all over, all over again. And then hundreds and thousands of people came to know the Lord again in Jerusalem. I about Judea, I about Samaria. What happened to them? Where those people were scattered? Look at chapter 9, verse 31. Chapter 9, verse 31. Then at the church's rest... Churches, now in the plural. It was only one church before the church in Jerusalem, the church in Jerusalem, the church in Jerusalem. But now, as they scattered everywhere, souls were one to the Lord and churches were being planted. They said there's a location there, there's a district there, and there's a region, there's something there. Because of that scattering, then at the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria. That's it, that's it. In Jerusalem, the work was going on, Judea, the work was going on and Samaria Galilee the work was going on and they were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied let's come back and look at Jerusalem again we're looking at chapter 11 chapter 11 verse 22 Acts chapter 11 verse 22 then tidings of these uh, things came into the ears unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem praise the Lord the church was now established there again apostles there disciples there workers there they reorganized everything again they he didn't say there's so much persecution. We're not going to do anything anymore because even if we raise up a church in Jerusalem again, you know, they may start their persecution again. No, they were not afraid. They went on and they did greater than they even did before. Then the tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem. And they sent forth Barnabas that they should go as far as to Antioch. It goes on as you look at uh, verse 20 7. Look at verse 27. It says, and in, tho in those days there came, uh, they came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. Not only apostles, they are trained other people and then now you have prophets there, you have evangelists there, you have other people there. That is the kind of example we have in the Acts of the Apostles. Even though there are some people that say that the way the reason our church is not growing is because uh, our city is a university city. When the students are, uh, when they are there, then they come to the church. But when they are on vacation, we don't see anybody again. It's just like when all these disciples were scattered. And then they, they go, they've gone to Judea and, uh, and Samaria. All those apostles, they got up and they started doing evangelism. And they started bringing people again to the Lord. That's what we do. If some people travel out, if some people, if they go on vacation, if some people uh, go anywhere, they're scattered abroad. We get the work done, and the work in that location will still be a standing work in Jesus' name. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. We're looking at the Jerusalem church. Acts chapter 12, verse 24. 
It says, but the word of God grew and multiplied. That means that the word of God came to you, you accepted it, you accept it, another one accepts. It was multiplying everywhere. And Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had finished their ministry and took with them John, whose name was Mark. And uh, let's look at uh, chapter 21 now. Chapter 21 of Acts is it, just to show us that uh, the church in Jerusalem began to grow again. If something had happened in your own local church and the number went down, you not just fold your hand and then say, well, you see what has happened now is persecution. You see what has happened now? This place is hard soil. The place here is like they are not listening. Of course, they will listen. Look at, your place cannot be as hard as Jerusalem with that persecution, even to the point of Stony Stephen. Your place should not be as hard as Jerusalem where the crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. What he said, this man will not reign over us or rule over us, but it in that same place, because we are filled with the Holy Ghost, maybe your problem is, although you are saved, although you believe that you are called to be a pastor, to be a leader, you are not full of the Holy Ghost, full of power, full of faith, and full of real vision from above. If we get back on our knees again, and have the Holy Ghost power in our lives, that little church will become a hundred, will become even a thousand, in Jesus' name. Look at this in Acts chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 17. Acts 21 verse 17. And when who are come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. You see this? There are brethren now, disciples there in Jerusalem, brethren there in Jerusalem, apostles there in Jerusalem. It says, and when we were come to Jerusalem, the brethren received us gladly. And the day following, Paul went in with us unto James and all the, all the elders that were present. You see what had happened there? They had raised up elders. They had raised up prophets in Jerusalem. They had raised Stop minister, they raised up workers. They didn't just, you know, remain who are just apostles here. Elders were raised up, leaders were raised up, deacons were raised up, Christian workers were raised up. That's what we're saying in our in our local churches. That if in January, if you had about 50 workers uh, there in that group, uh, by this time now, as we're coming to the end of the year, there should be more workers there. You're not just saying, Well, this is what we are in January, we're still maintaining the status quo, and they were not increasing at all. Everything must be on the increase. Leadership in the increase, workers on the increase, membership on the increase. If we're really dynamic and we're fruitful and we're moving on, that dynamite will come upon every one of us. It says the day following in verse 18, Paul went in with us unto James and to all the elders that were present. And when he had uh, saluted, he had greeted them, he declared particularly what things God had wrought among the Gentiles by his ministry. Look at verse 20. And when uh, they heard it, they glorified the Lord and said unto him, Thou seest, brother, how many thousands of Jews there are which believe. Thousands. In Jerusalem again. How many thousands there are that believe. You see the, the what we are learning here is that although persecution came that they were beaten, they were threatened, they were imprisoned, yet thousands eventually believed again. Uh, you understand then that the persecution could not destroy the faith of the apostles. Never. If you're a real child of God, persecution will not destroy your faith. I pray the persecution will not affect your faith in Jesus' name. As I look at these apostles and I see what they did in the few years that they remained there after the persecution had started, scattered, all those members, I see things that could not be affected by the persecution. Now, number one, their faith in the Lord was not touched, was not destroyed. Number two, their faithfulness to the Lord. Their faithfulness to the Lord remained. They kept on doing what the Lord had given to do. Is that persecution or no persecution? I'm going to remain faithful unto the Lord. Number three, their fervency in labor. Fervency in labor. They, they were just fervent, working for the Lord and witnessing and preaching the gospel, healing the sick and casting out devils. Persecution was there, but they said, that's not going to affect my fervency in labor. Number four is the fruitfulness for the Lord. They remained fruitful. I've read it to you that, you know, even though they were all scattered, 
And we have all these 12 apostles. Eventually, other converts came. They discipled them. They raised up elders among them. They raised up prophets and ministers among them. They had fruitfulness unto the Lord. And then, number five, they had fullness, the fullness of life. Fullness of life. Because the Lord said that you ask and should be given so that your joy will be full. See the fullness over there. People being saved and sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost and healed and delivered. Full fullness of life and then they are the first love the first love their first love remained intact it's not like you know persecution has come we're growing cold persecution has come we're tired now persecution has come i don't know what is going to come next i don't know what kind of a pressure or pain is going to come again no their first love was still there number seven their fellowship with the lord was not affected they kept on in fellowship with the lord and they kept on in fellowship with one another and look at that church again and I look at these uh, apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ because uh, let's come back now come back to Acts of the Apostles chapter 8 already we have seen that uh, thousands still believed after after those people have been scattered I'm looking at chapter one, chapter 8 verse 1 and Saul was consenting unto his death and at that time there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. I wanted to link that in your mind with what you read in chapter 21 where it says, you see brother Paul, that many thousands, thousands, thousands have believed here in Jerusalem. They were only 12 here because they scattered everyone and drove them away. Only these Apostle remained, but as you come to chapter 21, thousands were there. What do I see there? They retained their grace in service. Grace in service. You see, there are some people, when persecution comes, instead of, uh, you know, becoming better, they become bitter. They become so sorrowful and they be mourning and it's, they are not gracious anymore. The grace they ought to have in service will not be there. For these apostles, persecution, well, that's all right, that's all right. The Lord told us already before he left, there was going to persecution. They retain number one, their grace in service. Number two, the growth of saints, the growth of saints. The saints were growing spiritually as they were coming to the Lord. They knew persecution could come anytime, but then they kept on growing in their saintliness. And then number three, their giving of their substance. Giving of their substance. The giving just continued. You see the people already, some of them lost houses, some of them lost their land. They were driven away everywhere. But as they came to know the, the new converts that were coming in, they retained the same spirit of giving as the people that had gone away from Jerusalem. You see, they, they, we don't see that um, uh, much uh, today in many circles you know the new converts who are coming it's okay we understand that they've you know the founding fathers or the founding mothers this is how they consecrated their lives this is what they did and that's what they did they evangelized everywhere but you see i don't think i can do that they did that because all the people that those apostles now want to the lord in jerusalem they continue giving of their substance number four is a gathering together with the saints the gathering